The year is now 1869 and a terrible smallpox epidemic has hit Jacksonville. Listen in as residents discuss their fears, concerns, and the havoc this disease has caused in town. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Butler. <coughs> oh, evening, Miss Bilger. <laughs> oh, the smoke from all these fires in town sure is bothersome. Yes, but folks say that the smokes help stave off the smallpox pestilence. Although having these fires day and night certainly doesn't make breathing any easier. And now my whole shop smells like they're pine pitch and sulfur. Well, we're needing supplies. Is your store open? Oh, heavens no. I closed as soon as the smallpox pestilence started. The entire town of Jacksonville is under quarantine. I know when I came into town, I was told all the schools were closed and that all the church assemblies and public meetings had been canceled. Let me ask you this. Before you and Mr. Butler moved here from Illinois, was such a pestilence such as this as bothersome? Oh, not like this. When we left for Oregon, I started keeping a diary. Helps me recollect the things that happened to us. This smallpox pestilence reminds me of the ague epidemic in the summer of 1852. I remember writing, ague is the most terrible influenza with malaria-like symptoms of chills and fever and just uncontrollable shaking day and night. Mr. Sneed. Ms. Butler, Ms. Bilger. I remember 1852. No one were able to work the fields on the farms or the ranches. The vegetable gardens, they was just ruined. There weren't nothing for me to hardly help myself to at all. And the chickens were dead. The eggs was just laying there smelly in the coops. And the cows, they were just hollering wanting to be milked. Well, we lived over on Bear Creek at the time. So many of our neighbors were sick, it should have been called Ague Creek. <laughs> we had eight hired hands living in the two cabins we had built and only one of them could do a lick of work. Mm. Why, with all the chores that needed doing, Mr. Butler and I were working day and night, and that influenza lasted clear through the following winter. Let's see, this is 1869, 17 years later. <clears throat> this winter's just as sickly. What, we've got the croup and pneumonia, meningitis, mm. consumption, diphtheria, but this smallpox pestilence is by far the worst. We've lost over 50 of our town folk. 50? Really? We figured the pox was brung to us by an Indian squaw what belonged to a trader over in Crescent City. That fella, he just burnt up with, uh, with a fever, and he died. And when his neighbors got sick, it weren't long for the county built the pest house. Well, the last time I was out there. You were at the hospital south oh, of town? Sure. Jackson County wages me six bits a week to messenger letters out there and the one in Kanaka Flats, too. Them sickly folks needs to hear, wants to hear from their loved ones. But isn't it dangerous? I mean, aren't you afraid? Mm -hmm. that, that tall fella that the Board of Health appointed right. Marshal? Uh, James Hubbard. Right. Right. I, I heard he was delivering supplies to the pest house, mm -hmm. and he caught, came down with the pox, and they made him stay there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll keep the passel a distance if I can. But that pest house is comforting to them sickly folks up for the food. They got nothing but nuts and some fruit. Meat and cheese just seems to spoil quick in that heat and the stink out there. But but it's a fine hospital just the same. About a month ago I was out there and that squaw woman was there and that Negro fella, Bib Ike, you know, you've seen him around town. He was there too. And the whole Martin family, a couple weeks later went back and they was all dead. Now they're buried up in the Jacksonville Cemetery in the pauper section. Well, it's not just the poor that are succumbing to the pox, Mr. Sneed. Pox has no reference to class. Our own Mrs. Love, beautiful, refined young lady. She succumbed to the pox. They buried her in a rough pine coffin, and they took her body up to the cemetery in the back of a lumber wagon. Those horses practically galloped past my shop and Mr. Tavault the editor of our first newspaper, one of our most dignified citizens. They buried him in the middle of the night. No honor, no recognition. 
You perform a noble service, Mr. Sneed, but perhaps you should be quiet about your task. Mm. A gentleman you know in town here, Mr. Hunt, well, when he was out at the pest house, he had gone into the saloon. And when the men folk there heard where he'd been, they threatened to kill him. Uh, nobody pays me much attention, no well, how. The new marshal had to <laughs> quarantine the man just to save his life. Oh, and I understand that any household that has a member in the pest house has to hang a yellow flag on their mm -hmm. door. I mean, why, when I came into town, it was a veritable sea of yellow flags. Well, as I said, I've closed my shop, but there are some who've decided to stay open, hoping to gain a few dollars instead of thinking of the community good. Mm -hmm. Here, listen to what the Oregon Sentinel has to say. Stringent regulations should be enforced throughout the county to control smallpox. If in disobedience to the community, shopkeepers stay open hoping to gain a few dollars. They deserve the most scathing anathemas of the people. Mm -hmm. And when the danger's gone, they should not be patronized by the town. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid the whole town will likely close them down anyway. Stagecoach driver out of Wairika told me that the innkeepers along the road are real interested in knowing about his passengers. If anyone happens to mention he's from Jacksonville, the varmint is skipped into quarantine right quick. Mm -hmm. At gunpoint. Oh. Well, I gotta get me some supper. It ain't gonna scare itself up without me hunting some. Good night, ladies. Good night, Mr. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Bilger, the saddest thing to me is all the children who died. Why, in the past eight months alone, we've lost 20 youngins to all these diseases. This year, all I've been writing in my diary are the names of the children who have passed. I mean, there was Jesse Taylor, 10 months old. My sister. Jason Nye, just an infant. Horace Arthur Howard was a strapping six-year-old. I go to church with her. Sonora Lulu Saltmarsh. You know the salt marshes out in the Applegate? Right from the Applegate. Little Lulu was only three. Well, let me see. I, I want to make sure that I've locked the shop. Well, there's Lucy Jane George. <laughs> Can we re ask you to refrain from clapping? Oh, I'm good. sorry. About it's motorcycles, you got anything I guess though? No. Motorcycles are okay, but clapping is not.